Hi everyone, in today's video we take a look at 15 year old tech. That's right, in today's video we're taking a look at the Logitech Harmony 880. This device came out about 15 years ago in 2005. That's when these guys were really popular. Think about that. You know what? I don't care. I don't want to talk to you either. Now you're probably asking yourself, why are we looking at 15 year old tech in 2020? Well, I'll tell you why. This device might actually be more interesting for you than to purchase a brand new Logitech device for a universal remote use. Um, the reason why is this device packs a lot of features and used to be one of the most high-end options available at the time. Now, if you look back at the technology, it obviously changed throughout the years, but this still holds up today for most devices. So the reason I actually picked a few of these up is because we were trying to get universal remotes to set up few, a few TVs around the house. We're talking about four to five setups, DVD players, Apple TVs, uh, and obviously the TV and some had sound system. So this is up to three to four devices per TV. Now to get a universal remote today would cost you about 200 or so dollars and most of them connect straight to your phone. So they don't have this nice screen display here. Um, the thing is, this household doesn't contain the most advanced tech enthusiasts. Let's just put it that way. Uh, I'm, I'm the one that takes care of most of the tech around the house. And so obviously this would be too difficult to, to adapt to uh, for the phone apps and whatnot. Most people are not comfortable using that uh, in this household. But just in general, uh, this actually has a lot more features than the new guys. So for example, this device here allows you to connect a whole bunch of devices to it. So uh, we have it set up to watch a DVD, TV, uh, and a VCR. Uh, and also stream media. So this would be, for example, uh, a fire stick we would set up on, on this particular one. It's super easy to use. All you have to do is press the button that indicates the activity that you want to do. In this case, let's say you want to watch a movie, you press that, and then it would turn on all devices in relation to that and set them to the right input and whatnot, and the source uh, would be already set up. Now this remote allows you to control the volume output, the channels, a whole bunch of different features that you would do on your separate devices, but you can control them straight from here. So let's say you want to change channels on your TV, you can do that with a number pad. You also have access to the guide, skip, pause, uh, record, all types of features that are useful even today onto your devices. So it's very easy to, to, to use and operate. You also have a help button. So let's say you press the watch a DVD, but the DVD player turned on, but let's say the TV didn't turn on. All you would have to do is press help and it would ask you if it fixed the problem. It would resend that signal essentially and ask you if it fixed the problem. You say yes, no. You basically troubleshoot straight from the remote. It has a built-in assistant for that. Now, uh, this is super easy to use, but it is not necessarily the most advanced one. So some devices will not be compatible with this. For example, the Apple TV 4K that we have. You can turn it on and you can change the volume uh, of the TV when it's on. The problem is you can't actually control the device itself, so you can't uh, go up, down, and whatnot that you would be able to do on the Apple TV. Now, for some, that would be a setback, but I actually prefer the Apple TV remote because it has a nice trackpad. It's something that's not easy to replicate. So I like having the separate remote for that. Now, this would only be useful for turning on the TV, turning on my receiver, and turning on the Apple TV. After that, I would use the Apple TV remote. But when you consider that I have a receiver, a TV, a cable box, and I have an Apple TV remote, plus I have video game consoles. That's upwards of five remotes that you have to use to turn on the activity that you're going to be doing. So for example, you want to watch a DVD, that's going to be three remotes right there that you have to turn on, the DVD player, the TV, and the receiver. Now, one button would save you that time and you just use either this remote or the device's remote that you need to, to, to control, for example, the DVD player. Um, considering that, it just makes everything a little bit easier, a little bit more neat around the table or the, the counters and whatnot. It just, you won't have as many devices, remotes just hanging about. Uh, and this has a nice little charging dock that allows you to just store it. And it's very, very clean and simple to use. Now, obviously this device has its setbacks, uh, particularly the software is going to be very old. Obviously it's a 15 year old software. They've managed to keep it up to date with 
uh, newer frequencies for newer devices. So it will recognize, for example, Apple TVs, PlayStation 4s and whatnot, even Fire Sticks that didn't exist at launch. So they've updated that library um, quite nicely. The problem is obviously the software being old, it's hard to, to just maneuver, it's not very user friendly. And me having four of these, I have to create an account for each remote. I won't be able to just have one account and then set up five different remotes or four different remotes. So what I've done to remedy this is, let's say you have three remotes, four remotes, more than one. I've created a, a little sticker that I've put in the back here. Uh, and this sticker allows me to just know which email is connected to that uh, account. Just to make, basically make it easier for myself when I need to set things up or modify. Let's say that TV has a new DVD player. Well, instead of resetting all the devices, I just change the DVD player. So I know which account is connected with which. Now, the way to connect this to your devices is going to be through your computer using a cable. Now, it's going to plug in right here and you're going to have the software running on your computer. Software is available on the Logitech website. Um, and you'll have to go through the steps of setting up an activity and then a device. You can set up custom activities, which is really cool because obviously the activities that they offer might not be uh, up to date. I mean, they're looking at, you know, play CD and whatnot, play tape, play VCR, which is fine if you have those things. But in this case, for example, I name a few of my activities PS4, you know, Apple TV, Bluetooth music, because I adapted them to the activities that we're using today. These are custom filled and then you can create custom devices as well that are not in the repertoire. For example, the Apple TV is something that is easily named Apple TV 4K and have it differentiated from, let's say, uh, another streaming device that I have in the same TV setup. Now the 880 has a big brother, the 890. Except for the color difference in these two particular models, this one here has an additional advantage. It allows you to go through walls if you want to connect your devices in another room. This is particularly interesting for home theater setups or people that have uh, a TV into the wall. Now, the remote won't be able to control the device themselves through the walls. What you'll need is an adapter. This remote has that adapter. So it has basically a frequency receiver that connects in front of the TV and then you run it through the wall or wherever you run your wires. And then you would have a second frequency emitter that would be facing the devices. So basically it's just taking the signal that comes in here and then runs it through a wire and pushes it back where the devices are. This is a super cool feature that most people will never need, but specific usage people will find absolutely necessary. An additional really cool feature of this device is that it has a frequency emitter here and a frequency receiver here. So basically it allows you to uh, take your TV remote and this would be your universal remote and you would basically be able to teach your universal remote the buttons and frequencies related to those buttons from your TV remote. So if it doesn't have it in the library, it's very simple. Let's say you want to go volume up, you just press volume up and then this will learn it and adapt. And now when you press volume up, it will know what frequency to send out to the TV. One of the biggest reasons I picked up these as opposed to going with a new uh, system for universal remotes is the cost. As I told you, brand new remotes cost about 200 bucks each. Uh, and you know what? They have about the same features. These guys used to cost about 200 bucks each when they came out, but this was 15 years ago. I picked up four of them for like a hundred bucks. We're talking slightly used, sure, they're not gonna be ideal, they're gonna be a few nicks and knacks here and there, but if you're serious about having a unified system that's simple to use and high quality and that you could pick up for dirt cheap, these are great options. Definitely take a look at them. They are amazing for what they do even 15 years later. Now, obviously this comes with a grain of salt, but keep that in mind next time you're looking for a universal remote. Well, that was it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a big old thumbs up. Leave me a comment in the section below. And hey, I'll see you next time. Peace. You guys remember these? These were so dope. Like you would hang up on somebody so satisfied and you go, mm. it's just, ah, it, feel, ah, it feels so good to have this in my hand. It's just, ah.